We're looking now at getting up and running with the Python programming language and we want to do that all the way from the beginning from the point of just installing Python and so on. We are going to deal with Python in a couple of different ways. Uh, there's of course the command line interface. Um, there is also this powerful Jupyter Notebooks interface. We can also host Python files on the web and give people access to our code. So we can create a, a site where people can uh, create their own simulations or modify our simulations and extract results. So we'll be going through all those steps in this series of lectures and uh, we'll do that in seven main steps. So in the video today we are going to look at creating an environment where we can start working with Python. And a convenient way to start working with Python is through the Jupyter Notebook. So a Jupyter Notebook lets us create Python code together with our formulation. So all the text and uh, equations and formulation that you can see here has been created in a Jupyter Notebook. And the Jupyter Notebook is allowing us to integrate text and formulation like that with Python code. And this is very convenient uh, for a number of different types of people. So if you're a teacher uh, giving a, a university course or something like that, you can create your narrative together with your equations. And so here I am showing uh, one of the courses that I teach. So this notebook is actually being used uh, for the teaching of students. So this is not just uh, some theoretical thing that I'm talking about now. So it, elect, it allows us to integrate our narrative and our equation development with our simulation. So these are code blocks. These are Python code blocks and I'm running these live and uh, you can see the results are being generated there. In these notebooks, we can also create uh, some interactions. So we can create uh, the graphical uh, version of the results and we can create interaction so that our students can play around with these simulations and observe how the results change um, as, uh, as we uh, vary the parameters behind the simulation. So all this is possible in, in just kilobytes, right? So these are some Jupyter Notebook files here. So each of these is a separate document and looking here, the uh, the size of these is it's very low on the, on the order of ten kilobytes, uh, some in some cases. And so, this is a powerful way of disseminating our developments. So, if you're a teacher or if you're a student developing a report and wanting to integrate uh, text with uh, calculations and uh, and so on, uh, this is a convenient thing to work with. So Jupyter Notebooks, that will be the first interface with Python that we'll be dealing with. So to set this up, of course, um, the first step, we install a distribution that includes uh, Python. And you'll get that if you do a search for Anaconda. So Anaconda, the world's most popular data science platform, at least according to them. And uh, here, if you look, I think it's somewhere here. Um, here, um, you can download an installer for your platform. So you download and install that. And uh, after you install Anaconda, you will get um, almost an automatic suggestion that you go ahead and use the Anaconda Navigator. But that's not my recommended way of doing it. So um, I tend to work in shared folders because quite often um, I'm not going to take the time to go and upload my files to some central repository and things like that. I'd rather just give my students access to the folder where I'm writing my simulations. And so I would rather create my notebooks in my own uh, custom uh, selected folder whereas the uh, uh, using the navigator uh, makes it somewhat difficult to switch folders. So to use the folder I want, um, instead of opening up Anaconda Navigator, I'd rather open up Anaconda Prompt. 
and I copy uh, the, the path that I want to, uh, to open my file in or create my Jupyter Notebook in. So you see here, I've highlighted the, the path on my, on my PC and I'm just copying it with control C and then control, uh, well, CD to change the, the directory or the folder and then control V to paste it. And now I'm in the right folder and I want to fire up Jupyter Notebook. So I just type in Jupyter where uh, you can see the, uh, the Python abbreviation here. So Jupyter spelt in this way, Jupyter Notebook. And that's going to pull up for me um, in a web browser running on a, a local uh, host um, that's running my Jupyter Notebook. Now, this is not my preferred browser. Um, and the temptation then is to just go ahead and copy the URL from here and go and paste it um, up here in, in the address of my preferred browser. That's not going to work uh, unless you've set it up um, in, uh, unless you've already set up certain security features. So the right way to do it is to go ahead and copy the path that you get. So remember, we'd gone and typed in Jupyter Notebook. Um, so what you want to do is copy this path, which is going to include the local host and it's going to give us a token, which is quite a long string here. So be sure that you copy this entire string. You want the entire token together with the local host and so on. So control C to copy that. And then I'm just pasting that into the browser that I like to work with. And so now that's open there. Um, I'm just closing out these earlier files we were looking at. Right, so this is my Jupyter Notebook. And uh, you can see I can actually try to open uh, any of the, the files in that folder, but these are my notebook files. So IPI NB, um, those are my notebooks, right? Notebook, um, Python, um, yeah, so those are my Jupyter Notebooks. And then I can choose any of those just by clicking here. So that will open up in a new tab. So that's, um, that's my first notebook. And here you can see that this notebook has multiple cells to it. So in the next video, we'll look at how to navigate those cells and how to uh, convert cells either uh, to markdown that shows text or to code blocks that, uh, that perform our computations.